Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vato speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re-up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the base Wilmington police officers and New Hanover County Sheriff's deputies have identified 400 known gang members in our community. And tonight we're uncovering exactly how police ID gang members. WECT's Ashley Cotton. Investigators are looking to, into a fire that damaged the grave site of a murder victim. Crews responded to Calvary Memorial Cemetery early this morning and they found the fire burning at Corderice Tyson's grave site. They are not sure if someone intentionally set it but they have said that no other graves had any damage. Now, Tyson and Brianna Williams died in a shooting July 25th at a home in the Ogden area of New Hanover County. Investigators have identified Tyson as a validated gang member. They have not made any arrests in that double murder case. Cora Dries Tyson was taken into custody Tuesday, charged with shooting a 19-year-old in the chest on Red Cross Street. Tyson now facing several charges and additional ones are pending. Wilmington Police Department officers found that 19-year-old when they arrived on scene just after noon Tuesday. He was taken to the hospital in serious but stable that condition. that brewery to be up and running sometime this year. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so you two are new to, relatively new to True Colors. Uh, you weren't... Fr ago. No. Yeah. You, are you serious? Yeah. So what did you do to land yourself in prison? Fighting on by a fella. Carrying a gun. Got me, got me four years. Four years. Yeah. And where were you serving? Uh, I was in West Virginia in the United States Penitentiary. And I was in uh, Canaan, USP. That's the United States Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. So how um, how did you get brought into True Colors? Well, they already knew about me when, before I came out. But these good brothers, people told them about me. I was coming out. So once I get out, it was... They were interested in me, so I came down there and they gave me an opportunity. And now I ain't got to worry about the life of crime. <laughs> what gang were you in? Or are you I'm in? I'm, I'm a, sorry. I'm a GD. I'm a um, gangster disciple. Yeah, gangster disciple. Well, that's what they call it, but we call ourselves growth and development. We represent educational, economical, political, social development and unity. So what? At the home of True Colors Brewing's chief operating officer. Cordrys Tyson and Brianna Williams were gunned down at the house on Providence Road early Saturday morning. The house belongs to George Taylor III. His father is the founder of True Colors Brewing. True Colors hires active gang members from rival gangs in what is supposed to be a way to end gun violence. The sheriff's office says Tyson was a validated gang member. He worked for the brewery and was just featured in a Forbes article about the company in April. Now George Taylor, the CEO and founder of the company, released a statement that reads in part, and this is a quote, anyone who is fortunate enough to be close with Corey knows how hard he has fought to keep it all together. Having personally seen the pressure he dealt with from friends, leaders, and co-workers like myself and other gangs, it was stressful just to be in his presence. With all of that and the history he battled, he still used his influence for good even when his backup was up against the wall." End quote. George Taylor says while true color saves many lives, he doesn't know if they will ever get to zero lives lost from violence. And he adds, it'll take grace and understanding to continue to make the change. Now, this is the second shooting at a property owned by the Taylors. Both involved Tyson. In November of 2019, a shooting on Red Cross Street injured a 19-year-old. At the time, the home was owned by George Taylor, the founder of True Colors. Tyson was arrested and charged with possession of a firearm by a felon. Yeah, yeah, we back. It's your boy pop a lot. Mob, mob, mob. We on our way to North Carolina with it. NC, the port city. Wilmington to be exact. Now, I really can't remember if we've been to Wilmington yet, but it's 
definitely one of those cities that people are going to sleep on. Now, when you think about North Carolina, especially when you think of crime, I'm going to say the first cities that are going to come to mind are going to be cities like Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, Vietnam, or Fayetteville, and a few others I could name. But you really don't think about Wilmington, North Carolina, when you think about crime. But once you dig underneath the name and just the personal perception that you have, and you start to compare a city like Wilmington, North Carolina with cities like Charlotte, I would almost liken it to the comparison of Atlanta to Macon or to Augusta or to Savannah. It's not technically the same or as fast, but some of those cities are as violent if not more violent. So like I said, in comparing Wilmington, North Carolina to Charlotte, North Carolina in 2002, now the violent crimes per 100,000 people are gonna be very, very comparable. Now Wilmington stands at 35.4 per 100,000 people, while Charlotte is gonna be slightly under Wilmington at 34.3. Then I went on to compare it with the city of Raleigh, North Carolina, and I was shocked to see that in Wilmington, North Carolina crime numbers almost double Raleigh's because Raleigh sit at 20.3 per 100,000 people. And like I said earlier, Wilmington is still at that 35.4. It took me to go to the city of Durham before I found a city with a higher crime rate. And it's still going to be close because Wilmington, North Carolina, like we said, is at 35.4. But Durham, North Carolina was slightly higher as far as the crime rate is concerned with 40.6 incidents per 100,000 people. So that just kind of puts the city of Wilmington, North Carolina into perspective for a lot of people not familiar with the area. And it leads me to segue into the person or the subject that I'm going to be covering today. And it's going to be a guy by the name of Cordrice Robert Tyson. Now, he is going to be symbolic of the city of Wilmington because whether it's him being a validated gang member in a city that people are unaware of how active the gang problem is, or maybe it could be the retribution story of him trying to get his life back on track. But either way, He's going to be a prime example of things that happen, especially not only in the state of North Carolina and worldwide, but in the city of Wilmington. And I'm going to do my best to try to peel back the onion on exactly what happened with this case. And I'm also going to pose some questions to you guys as far as being a gang member or a street figure and then transitioning your life or trying to transition your life and you find yourself where you're in a position where you're in the public light or the public eye. Now, based on all media accounts, Cordrice Tyson, who was born on April 27th, 1992, was a validated and documented gang member, and he was associated with the Gangster Disciples. Now, not exactly sure of who their rivals are or if they have rivals. Based on all my research and media outlets, it was a lot of people that was hurt when he died, as I seen tributes kind of pouring out on YouTube and Facebook, but there were some people that was happy after his death because his grave would go on to be torched after his murder. But I want to talk about some of the things that happened to or that led up to his murder. Now, Cordrice Tyson was associated with a company by the name of True Colors. Now, True Colors is a brewing company in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I want to say there, the company motto or one of the objectives of the company is to hire gang members and almost rival gang members. Now, I've never been to one of the breweries. I've never been to any of the shops, anybody that has or worked there. Definitely get in the comment box. Now, when I first heard of this business model, I thought that this was a very controversial way to kind of go about an everyday business. Uh, it sounded a little bit messy at first, but then when I stepped back and I thought about it, I'm like, well, we always talk about people hiring felons, people hiring people with checkered past. Maybe they're just trying to do the right thing. I'm going to really leave that up to y'all to decide. But Cordrice Tyson or Corey's history with True Colors did not start when he was murdered 
in 2001. You would have to rewind a few years back to 2019 when he would be arrested by Wilmington police for a shooting that took place on Red Cross Street where a 19 year old was shot in the chest. Now, what a lot of people don't know about that shooting incident was it took place at the home of True Colors CEO at the time and the son of the COO of the company, George Taylor III. Now, George Taylor III spoke about the company's business practices after the murder occurred and he would say that they're trying to fight crime almost from the inside. But he also said that he know that there's no way to totally end gang violence. Now, the media didn't really go into the relationship of Cordrys Tyson and Robert Taylor III's son, but they had to have a very close relationship because the house that Cordrys Tyson performed the shooting for which he received four years was owned by the CEO of True Colors. The house that he was murdered in also was owned by the company. And not only that, Robert Taylor II was going to be present at that house at the time, along with Cordrys Tyson and another female by the name of Brianna Emily Williams, who was 21 years old at the time. Now, it was another unnamed female who was allegedly shot during this supposed home invasion. And it was really odd to me that everybody in the house was injured due to that home evasion except for the ceo not to say that it's any kind of conspiracy theories but there were some afterwards because they wanted to know how come he didn't contact 911 because the one person that did contact 911 was the unnamed female that was shot now through her injury she somehow was still able to call 911 and she stayed on the phone for them for 18 minutes where she would try to go on and explain the situation. And she would say that her and Cordrys Tyson would sleep in the bedroom where they were awakened and shot. Now, as far as what Brianna Emily Williams was doing in the house, that's kind of still up for debate. But one could only speculate that if one female was in the bed with Cordrys Tyson, the other female probably was there with the COO of True Colors. But who really knows? But what we do know is authorities will end up arresting three gang members for this homicide. And it's going to be a guy by the name of Darrell Green, Amante Bell, and Raquel Adams. Raquel Adams was actually being held in jail on a separate charge when he was charged with this murder. So the sheriff will go on to say that these were just very, very bad guys. And we don't know what this situation has ties to. But with Cordrys Tyson being a validated gang member, it's easy to kind of blame it on senseless gang violence. But I do want to ask the question, whereas did he make himself a target, even if he was out the gang by associating with the company True Colors? Because they say he was on Forbes. He was on the news. Just things like that, even if you're getting out, could make people kind of grow animosity towards you, and especially someone that you probably committed violent acts against in the past, but I, I want to know what y'all think about this entirety of the situation, a business practice or model of true colors. Um, what y'all think led up to the situation because it's just so many different ramifications. They honestly could have came from one of the females. We, we're not going to assume that or mention that, but definitely a possibility. But yeah, y'all get in the comment box. Flood that bitch. Let me know what y'all think. Shout out to Wilmington. We gonna be back, man. Y'all a little scary around here, but y'all ain't scare us enough to not pop back up. Y'all hit the subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. And y'all definitely follow me on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We gonna be back with some more real trill spill shit. Trust me, it won't be long. Y'all tap in with your boy, Mob, Mob, Mob.